Hi guys and welcome to episode 11 of the Higher Man Podcast. It is Wednesday the 2nd of November, 21 past 10 in the morning. I uh, hope you guys are doing well. It's number uh, number 11, so we're getting past the milestone. Mm-hmm. How are we doing today? You alright? Yeah, I'm yeah, pretty good. It's good to be back on the podcast. Uh, yeah, we've got an uh, interesting uh, topic to talk about. We're going to kind of talk about atheism, the theism. Uh, like the origins of religion, maybe, um, maybe the origins of uh, uh, atheism, negatives and the positives of both, and maybe what one applies most to the modern world, something like that. Kind of go off on tangents and uh, see where we get to. Um, but yeah, I think coming into it, maybe you follow you fall more into the theist side, and I'll probably fall more into the atheist side. Yeah, um, you can maybe say that. I mean. Well, I guess we'll get into our own beliefs more. I wouldn't say it's so black and white, though. No, okay. That's fair. Uh, yeah, so should we start with the origins of religion? Well, we, we're not really 100% sure where each one came from, but maybe yeah. we'll kind of talk like, about Yeah. It. Well, I was thinking before this, you know, in terms of origins of religion, that obviously you can look back and maybe you'd see the first religions um first organized religions is maybe like it could be the mesopotamian ones um that i feel like that might be the original one or, or the one we have the most evidence like the first evidence of religion but um i think the more important point about the origins of religion is that you look at all different cultures across the world and all of them have religion so it sort of indicates that religion isn't maybe isn't something that comes up by chance, but there's something fundamental in the development of culture that a development of some sort of organised religion comes with that. Yeah, I think that's fair. Obviously, all these religions have their differences that vary, like, almost astronomically, like, some believe in, uh, like, the weather, weather gods, like the, I think, like, the great, like, Genghis Khan and his followers sort of, um we used to pray to like the water gods the air gods and all that mm-hmm. compared to like a muslim or a catholic who believed in one higher god that controlled them all rather than yeah. individual gods but but yeah i think you're right completely right there is something fundamental about believing in a higher power uh that all humans do love do it yeah it's interesting you said that about like the difference between some religions are like polytheistic and then others are monotheistic so they believe in one god um and i I kind of think you know from from what i understand like the the monotheistic religions uh originated from from the multiple gods but um but it was kind of a distilling over time of so you have all these different gods all these different values so to speak and that over time the sort of the most important values from them were were distilled in, into the into the one true gods one might say um so yeah um i feel like there's a lot of tangents we could go off here but maybe maybe it could it would be good to briefly talk about the origins of atheism before diving into anything anything else too deeply and and well so the origins of atheism is something we've talked about quite a lot in the previous episodes um especially the ones where we spoke about nietzsche in terms of death of god um about how um with the rise of the scientific methods and an objective way of viewing the world that uh, you know science kind of disproved religious beliefs It, it disproved them in terms of them not being factual truth um and this sort of led to this objective view of the world where there wasn't really any space for particularly the supernatural beliefs of religion um that would be outside kind of the scientific things you can identify scientifically um it kind of doesn't leave any space for them so that's maybe why atheism came up yeah i mean i don't know exactly the exact date but like Darwinism was quite a big uh, fighter against like the religious idea of uh, uh, Adam and Eve and like where humans came from, and that was kind of a atheist idea. You could almost argue, 
and yeah. then you kind of get to later on a few hundred years later you got the big bang theory which kind of throws everything into the uh spot like throws a spanner in the works for like religions um but i'm guessing like we know like muslims catholics jews are all kind of based on the same fundamental ideas but what like what about like buddhism and like other religions what do like do they believe in god created the world or do they believe other things like what qualifies as a religion if you know what i mean yeah is it that they believe in a higher power that created everything in life or is it something else yeah well it comes back we we kind of had a conversation before about um what makes a religion versus what makes a cult and it's hard to really hard to really identify what what makes a religion but i guess the definition of it would be just a a set of set of beliefs or or values that orient you in some way so yeah i I guess at the most fundamental level it's just a set of beliefs and it kind of so it kind of comes back to like so religions i said that religion was like a fundamental thing for humans because it developed in different cultures across the world um and you can ask well like how fundamental is it considering the different cultures evolve different values and different religious religious truths um but i think the thing which is fundamental about religion and about how it evolved is that um like the way humans view the world and the way you know the structure that we look at reality with is through a subjective lens which we understand the world through through narrative and stories we don't understand the world or resonate with the objective facts that science brings us they're not they're not really innate to the human experience in any way they're, they're kind of a separate thing so i think that religions evolved as a means of um understanding the world through through narrative and through understanding ideas through personification of of like a higher power as as a person type thing or or as a conscious being like the way that allows us to understand things and interpret things and um and kind of the way religious truths come about is over time it, it kind of determines what's what's right or wrong um for humans as, as over time it distills down it almost almost in an evolutionary way itself like which ideas survive over time are the ones you, you know the ones that seem to work out over time well those are the ones which will survive and move on and as time goes on um as as the stories are passed down they're distilled down to the the irrelevant parts are removed and they're distilled down to the fundamental truths so yeah there's there's a lot of ideas that i don't know if you have any jump off points from that <clears throat> um well based on like what you said at the end if like we continue advancing through time and our society continues to advance it's like quality of life for the like, majority of people like and all these things will we get to a point where we end up distilling out basically the majority of religion from our um from our existence but i understand like the use like case for it back in the day when everything was kind of a bit a bit less civilized and like there's a little bit less order and understanding of uh how to create your own like values and morals but nowadays like we've got ordered societies that understand the structure of what life should be without the need for religion to inform them like will we get to a point where religion just doesn't need to be um like a strong part of everyone's lives um well you said that like we're in a place now where you know people understand i, I don't know exactly how you add it but like people understand like how their lives should be but I t- do people understand how their lives should be like and this is a idea something like th- a question i thought of um before this episode was to do with how like is it actually possible to not be not be religious as as you claim to be uh, as someone who identifies as an atheist are they inevitably going to fall into having 
a some sort identifying some sort of ideology as as their highest set of values because we can't <clears throat> do anything in the like it's we need a set of values and right are we never almost like the um, almost like the Soviet Union where they criticize religions usually but instead of uh, swapping it for rationality they swapped it for another dog dogma of believing in that state as a higher power letting them take control of everything and all these other things yeah so yeah i guess i think you're right but but in that case i feel like there wasn't necessarily an acceptance by the people in the soviet union it was forced upon them by the powerful state so i don't know if we have had a opportunity for humans to like rid themselves of these ideologies <clears throat> and swap it out for like, rationality but then i guess could you argue rationality then <clears throat> sorry <clears throat> rationality ends up then becoming the the ideology or is that even like yeah sort of... no i think that i think rationality does become the ideology and it creates this problem where it's difficult and perhaps impossible to derive values directly from facts because at a certain point you need to make an ethical decision on which facts you decide to value the most and there's no i feel like there's no rational way you can identify which fact is more relevant than another it all comes from perspective and it when you're when it comes to making values and deciding what's right or wrong it does come down to this sort of ethical decision um that you have to make you can't i'm not sure values can be derived directly from rationality <clears throat> um, yeah i think that's probably true but i don't know like when it comes to like the origins of religion like there's a the, the guy brian Mu muraresca i think that's how you say his name he's um He's written a book about, I think it's like uh, the origins of Christianity, and he's basically explored how he thinks it became a thing, and he thinks it became a thing through the use of psychedelics. And like, I'm quite interested in the psychedelic world and like hearing these stories about people's like um, trips and all these things. And like one theme that you get from um, what psychedelics brings a person is they go into this realm or this dimension, and then there's a higher higher being or like a, an entity that seems all knowing almost and this entity can trans uh can speak to them and translate to them without using words and all these other things and it seems to me that like religions probably started from having these like unbelievable experiences with psychedelics this higher power telling them how they should live their live their life and then it, i feel like instead of the individual thinking that was my own consciousness that was able to tell me that they've just kind of outsourced it to this higher higher power and this like external god and i don't really think that you need to outsource it to an external god rather you need to realize that the higher power that told you how to live your life is within you and then you can do, use that to to know what to do so you don't have to always look to an outside like you don't have to always look to a god to know what to do you can use your own judgment yeah yeah, well, I feel like because that explains how religion could come about without the existence of anything su supernatural. And this is kind of, I'd say, I believe in the value of religion, but when it comes to supernatural element of it, as as time as time's gone on, I've believed less and less in in like see any supernatural elements of it because it makes perfect sense to me why religion would evolve even as a human universal regardless of whether there was actually anything supernatural and i think it comes back to the way humans experience the world and and we experience it through through narrative and, and storytelling in some fundamental way which is kind of the origins of the of religious stories and coming back to psychedelic experience like that's a very that's an extremely subjective experience and there's and it's cons almost it's completely separate from any objective facts or it, it like the objective 
objectivity is like irrelevant to that experience because it's one of um like conscious like it's it's just a different state of consciousness and i feel like yeah those things perhaps those that sort of experience is what can lead to forming values and understanding things on a different level whereas you can never really get that through rationality and and you mentioned the soviet union there in terms of rationality and i think yeah so so when that that is an example of you know the um like the whole marxist and communist ideology was super like supposedly based upon rationality about how the world would be a better place but um and i mean you can look at that and say well the reason they got it wrong was because their rationality was wrong like their rationalizations weren't valid it wasn't um like it didn't work logically but perhaps <clears throat> i don't know perhaps perhaps you can't it, it's actually not possible to, to derive proper values purely from rationality and well could you yeah, go on so could you say that that unfortunately with rationality you are going to get it wrong along the way but the longer time goes on the more examples you have um the more examples you've made uh that allow you to understand if something works or something doesn't work so yeah the soviet union was an absolute crisis and i like, shouldn't really have happened but using rationality can we look back on it and say okay we did that wrong in this way so we need to make sure that doesn't happen again in the future yeah whereas with religion it seems to me like rationality is kind of not thrown out the window there's obviously a lot of rational thinking in it but the ideas in religious texts are stuck and like they aren't up to interpretation to change like for change like the things might have worked back a thousand years ago mm. but a rational mind would say okay nowadays you can't really say homosexuality is a thing that shouldn't be happening in the world let's move on from that but the religious text holds religious people back because they think we can't change this dogmatic ideology yeah yeah it's in it's interesting actually because because we talk about like rationally like if you if you follow purely rationality then you would be able to derive a system of values simply based upon the results of what what comes about and and that's i mean it's actually similar to the way i view religion to be fair because i, I kind of see it as like over time it's it's the distillation of the values that actually work uh, okay. so those are the values that, that for, form the stories and the beliefs of religion so perhaps yeah perhaps you know that was just that it, it's kind of just another source of trial and error about what works um but um but i think another thing about the religious beliefs is that we've been able to move forward as societies and as a civilization for the past thousands of years with these religions with these religions being like the fundamental values that most people hold and we and we don't really know the consequences yet of taking away those values that that would underlie you know the direction we pursue because you know it might seem seem like obviously the atheist way of viewing the world is is the correct way now to some people they they might think that's absolutely correct but the fact is that's like the the world hasn't has been atheist like on average like across the world for like what 100 to 200 years or something like we yeah. don't really know what the consequences of wide-scale secular beliefs are uh, and about the positive and negative effects that can have which may, which kind of brings <clears throat> us into we can talk more specifically about um on an individual level and on a societal level like what are the positives and benefits of having religion positives and negatives of having religion and, and the same for um atheism do you want to do you want to start mm -hmm. us off there so let's start with the positives of religion yeah um just initially i think like 
religion definitely has a positive impact on the individual, but I think it can have some negative consequences on society. Like as an individual, if you read a religious text and you kind of try and attain like a higher level of being based on what these texts tell you, I think you will live a better life uh, on average. But when it comes to like societal level, like you know, read a religious text and you get in, get together with your buddies and you're all discussing the text and discussing why it's the best thing in the world, blah de blah then I feel like that can create a call to action. <clears throat> and then you get this idea of, well, we're together, we're religious. We need to stop all these other people doing non-religious things that don't agree with our text. Uh, and I think that's where the problem gets caused. Like in terms of like abortion in the US or even like other things. I remember Sam Harris, who's like a massive atheist. I don't know if he's a, is he a psychologist or is he a... I think he's a neuroscientist. Neuroscientist, yeah. He, um, I think he suggested that stem cell research isn't being done on a federal scale in uh, America based on um, like the Christian ideas that it kind of, like that's where conception could possibly happen. So you can't be toying with human life like that. So but like there's stem cell research is one of the things that could like help so many different illnesses in the world, but they're not researching it on a federal level because of this collectivist religious idea. Mm -hmm. Like I could know this collection of religious people coming together and saying that this is wrong. Whereas on like an individual level, I feel like it's beneficial as long as the individual realizes it's just, to the individual and you shouldn't try and force it on other people yeah that makes sense so, so the problems come when when religious beliefs are forced upon other people first of all um i guess there's a there's an argument yeah i, I don't know it's tough like you think about a, a belief system and if you believe your belief system is right then is it right or wrong to force it on other people? I mean, I I think it's wrong, but I can understand why someone who would have that belief system would think it's the right thing to do to force it on someone else. Because yeah, yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't you, you're trying to help your friends live the best life they can live because this religion's helped you live the best life you can live. Yeah, you want everyone to live the best lives that they can live. So no, I understand that. Yeah, but then it's almost a little bit egotistical for you to think that it your is, way yeah. of thinking is the best way to live. Mm -hmm um yeah so so that creates a problem um on a uh, and particularly on a societal scale where it starts to limit the progress of like science really uh in a science that can help people and that will make the world a better place like to limit to put a limit on that for the sake of holding religious beliefs you know that can definitely create problems um what would you say yeah. about that, the negative, like the, the negative consequences of like atheism? Like if we didn't have these moral values informed by religion, like do you think we get to a point where we end up cloning humans and then we have like little babies that we experiment on, but we don't see them as human because we, they didn't derive from conception, which is a religious idea. Mm -hmm. Like do you think that's like something that could happen if we had like atheism and that's like a negative consequence of it or? Yeah, well, I guess I guess the problem the problem there the the argument there would be that in the absence of religion, um, there is there is an underlying ethic to guide your actions. Um, I think this is something that Sam Harris pushes back on in terms of a, an argument for religion that um, just because you're atheist and you don't believe in the like nonsense of the Bible or, or whatever or however you want to put it doesn't mean you don't have ethics and proper morals and values he he doesn't think those things necessarily have to be related um but then like when it comes to the problems of atheism i guess it comes back it comes down to the things we spoke about in terms of the death of god nietzsche's idea so he he said um that th that the death of god um people losing their belief in, in religion in, in the modern world would lead to um, the adoption of ideologies to replace those religions, which we saw 
plenty of in the 20th century. Um, <clears throat> obviously didn't end very well for a lot of people. And then also denialism uh, and a lack of meaning. And, and we spoke a lot about this in the previous episodes about how, um, you know, the idea was that in the absence of God, we don't have a, a guiding purpose outside of ourselves, which um, it would inspire us to do great things. Um, so, so the great people of the past who, who did things to push the culture forward in the name of, you know, glorifying God through their actions, so to speak, like that motivation is now gone and, and people, you know, people have the idea in people don't believe in the afterlife anymore. So, so they think, well, in a, in a million years, none of my actions are going to matter. So, so it's that kind of thinking, which affects them as well, which takes away meaning from their actions. So I think there definitely is in the absence of religion, there can certainly be an issue. I think the biggest issue on an individual scale is, is the lack of meaning and purpose. And, um, which doesn't necessarily, perhaps I, I definitely think you can have that as without believing in God or without being religious, but I think the default in absence of, of a belief in a higher power is, is that, you know, that this last man type of thing, the last man idea from Nietzsche of, of dealing with the suffering and, and meaninglessness of life through, through pleasure and consumption and not really reaching your full potential. Yeah, I get that. I mean, kind of going back to what you said about if there is no belief in the heaven, then people kind of lose the idea of meaning and like they don't necessarily want to, they might not necessarily want to live their life in a productive way that like benefits other people because of fear of like not getting into heaven. But then like religious ideas are needed, like in, are needed to be abided by to get into heaven and a lot of people won't allow homosexual marriage or they'll try and kill anyone that really leaves their religion because they think it's um, like a deadly sin or whatever I can't remember the exact name for it um so like apostates or something or is that it where you leave the religion something like that I don't know if it, but yeah so these religious ideas that have to be abided by for you to get into heaven so like what do you say to that um, like, yeah, their, their beliefs are obviously religious beliefs that I disagree with in terms of, in terms of getting into heaven. Um, but, um, I guess, I guess that comes down to, to very specific things, um, which obviously are relevant, but I think the point I was trying to make was that in the absence of in the absence of like an overall guiding guiding principle a highest value to pursue um yeah it's it's difficult to it might be difficult to justify taking the difficult actions which which would be best for you to do when you, you know your, your moral there is no kind of fixed moral compass for you to follow if that, if that makes sense yeah but yeah that's another problem of religion like uh, that well that's probably the biggest problem with religion the biggest criticism it gets is um for the like shit about like, obviously anti-homosexuality saying i don't know exactly what it says but it says like you need to fucking i don't know if like those people will go to hell or, so, or something like that or, or um or well, there's there's some very barbaric shit in the Bible. Like I think there was something about like if you use the two different types of fabric for the same piece of clothing, then that's like a fucking <laughs> that's a sin. Like yeah, you know, sure. kind of ridiculous things. Um, and there are kind of ridiculous beliefs in the Bible which you know it's hard to really justify them. It's hard to it's hard to stick up for them, but um. I don't think you can necessarily throw the baby out of the bathwater here and say that religion is entirely barbaric and irrelevant due to, you know, some of the, some of the things that are in there, because it is still relevant and important as a guiding principle. 
Yeah, and I guess like like you said earlier, those silly things kind of get distilled out. Yeah, but I guess I guess they don't always. <laughs> um, yeah, but but yeah, <clears throat> it kind of well, I'll, I'll talk about because you you spoke about how you think religion can be beneficial to the individual, and I feel like I I do. You know, I'm not the most religious person, but I have found value in the religious stories as as um as like metaphorical, uh, uh, well, as stories, just sort of just ways of ways of conveying an idea about how to live. So there was one of the episodes where I spoke quite in depth about the Cain and Abel story, um, about how that's a story about the about when when the world does not reward you for the actions you're taking um what's the right path forward to become resentful about it or to take responsibility and that's like that's i feel like it's a very fundamental story to to the human to the human experience and it kind of demonstrates what the right what it gives a moral compass for the right and wrong path not to say any of the events in that story actually happened because i don't believe that they did but I think it's still an important, relevant story, symbolically. And there are plenty of other stories in the Bible, you know, um, that that I think that I think symbolically have a lot of value. Um, but yeah, I don't. Not it's not like I believe everything in the Bible, but I think symbolically, a lot of these stories have have value, which is timeless. Mm. I mean these stories that are told and they kind of get dissected in this modern world a thousand or few, few thousand years after they were uh, initially like conceived how do we know that these stories were told with the purpose of the message that we understand from it now uh, like, how do we know the stories are told <clears throat> with the intention that the message that we understand from it now was the sole purpose of it being told like how do like is there just a chance that these stories were told because of someone's um like chance of imagination and nowadays we're dissecting it in such a way to gain this benefit beneficial uh, narrative for, from it rather than it just being a story someone told and that'd be it no i i do think that it that the stories come to exist because the narrative is is important and relevant uh, represents something symbolically and i think that's it's particularly true for the stories where you have you have very similar stories you could call them archetypal stories which the the, the storyline is basically the same across different religions and obviously there are a little twist to it but symbolically they have the same message and i think the reason they have the same message is because it does represent something which is fundamental to the human experience and is is true subjectively um so yeah, I do think I do think the stories innately have have meaning uh, and relevance, but it's not as if that was articulated in, in while I was making the stories. I think the stories were a means of exploring these ideas and, and coming across the truth. Not that someone had an articulated idea of what the proper values were. And then they try and come up with a story to represent that. It's it's the stories themselves, like this exploration of of the values, right? Uh, yeah, that's that's sort of hard to get my head around, but I do know what you mean. I mean, that's one thing that I remember listening to Jordan Peterson talk about. He said he found it like just utterly unbelievable that these thousands of years ago that these people were able to come up with such in depth ideas about the human experience and how we should live our lives yeah uh, and that kind of made me go oh shit maybe religion is real if they were that clever back then but maybe instead of that it's just that you were saying they just explore these ideas and then the story is kind of a result of that is that what you mean yeah well i think i think well jordan i jordan peterson's view of it i think is is pretty similar to mine in terms of like it it wasn't these the meaning behind the stories wasn't articulated before the stories were made like we can we can dissect the stories now and explain explain the meaning of them but um but it is it is quite 
I think it is quite amazing how how they discovered these ideas through the stories themselves. And, and this is something Jordan Peterson talks about. Um, and we briefly spoke about this at the end of the Fight Club episode about how like proper proper art is is um the art itself is the exploration and the, the realization of of the tr of the truth and the values that it's representing like the story kind of writes itself in a way um they don't if it if you were to articulate the ideas beforehand and then try and produce a piece of art based on that then that would be like artificial in a way it'd be propaganda and like, i believe this because i've heard jordan peterson say it and, and it <clears> resonates <throat> with me um and i think that's the thing about the religious stories the stories the symbolism in the stories was obviously obviously represented some ideas in a way that resonated with, with our subjective understanding of reality on a fundamental level without having to articulate the ideas beforehand yeah yeah it makes sense okay based on like that that like when you say like true art and like it's real beauty and um like it's real beauty and meaning comes from the exploration of these ideas rather than having an intention behind an, an intention before that like, you want to draw this or explore this like not explore this but state this do you think that eventually if we get like ai good enough that ai still won't be able to create true beautiful art like humans do because ai i guess or does does that beg the question of can you create a fully autonomous self-conscious ai yeah my intuition would be that ai could could do it itself um and then if ai could do it would that not kind of be evidence for like rationality almost like we don't need to believe in a higher power like like because like, ai wouldn't necessarily believe in a higher power i don't think um but they're able to still produce these amazing feats of art and like like a human would so the point i was making about um the building stories is that is is realizing the truth in a way it's kind of uh, like the point i was getting at there is is that the these fundamental things to perhaps the human experience which which would be archetypes so the stories would be archetypal ar archetypally true and then through the exploration in, in the artwork of producing and creating the artwork like a great piece of artwork will represent those fundamentally true um true stories so when it comes to ai like the thing about ai is you can you, you can train it to to learn to learn in itself so so it comes up with you don't, you don't need to pro program it exactly in a certain way but i guess what you can do is you can give it you can orient it in a certain way so you give it a goal and it will basically figure out how to do it itself um and perhaps you know i, I feel like i don't understand ai well enough to, to to properly give a good point about this but i do i do think I, I think AI would be able to create great works of art because if you if you were to sim if you were to orient it properly, perhaps in line with cert certain truths, or I mean, obviously it could create cool looking pieces of art, but whether they'd whether they resonate with the human spirit, yeah, whether it, whether it would really be able to resonate with with humans is it, difficult. But I guess I don't I don't know. It's hard to say, but. But then, so so on that point, I, I I don't really have a conclusion. But then you want to say like, okay, does this mean that um, does this mean that if if AI can do it, which I think it probably can, like does that remove the need for a higher power or or a god? And I think 
what have you got thoughts on that? I don't know. I feel like if you were able to create a self-conscious autonomous like being like AI, like a software, but it becomes like an actual entity itself. Through that, that I that you just I would assume personally that the AI wouldn't believe in God and have these religious ideas um, that they subscribe to. But in saying that, like you kind of think about humans are the creator of that consciousness, so then we almost become the God. Mm-hmm. Um, and to think in that sort of way, and like I sort of think an AI might believe that. But if we believe in a God that's omnipresent, omniscient, omnipotent, uh, there's no way that humans themselves can become gods, but we would be regarded as gods possibly by the AI. Mm-hmm. So that would kind of, dis- for me, that would disprove the idea of God. Yeah. Well, if you were to, I don't, I think it perhaps, because the idea of God is a complicated thing. So, so kind of the way I see it is, is God is a conceptualization of a higher power in, in, in some way. And or and also that like of the highest values. So so the, so the religious values are are the highest values. Uh, and perhaps if you were to create a fully autonomous AI, you would have to, in order for it to orient itself in the world the same as humans do, it would need a set of values to act upon. It, it's impossible to act without a set of values. So perhaps in order to exist, you would need. A set of values that that you hold that you hold true but yeah it's weird think about the question and it's this fascinating question like if if we were to create a society of robots like would they come up with their own kind of re- religious beliefs and their own values like based upon is is it some is there something fundamental about living in the world and having to orient yourself in a certain way in, yeah. as time goes on like this is that inevitably lead to the the structure of some sort of higher values and uh perhaps perhaps you could call that religion or i, I feel like I've, yeah i feel like that's that kind of hits the point that we we need the highest value in order to act because if you don't value one thing more than another thing then why do anything and at a fundamental level, it comes down to like our survival needs. Um, like, yeah, I value this piece of food here if I'm starving to death. But um, but beyond that, how we orient ourselves, is it fun? Is it is it essential to have to have a higher higher subjective value in order to orient ourselves? I think it. I think it maybe is, and that's kind of where religion comes from. Yeah. It'd be interesting, and we'll never see it in our lifetime, possibly for millennia, but it'd be interesting to see if another species or another like, handful of species becomes, uh, get, like, gets to like a similar level of consciousness as humans do, and we end up communicating with them. Would they also create their own religion? Like, as, as long as any species gets to a certain level of consciousness, do they start to create this idea of God? Mm-hmm. Like, like you're saying with AI, yeah. Perhaps. If, dolphin, if dolphins are like got really fucking smart all of a sudden, and then they start to believe in this sort of god, yeah. Maybe that I mean, would that be evidence that is real? Or would that be evidence? Like, what would that be evidence for? And what how you define real? I guess, but that leads into interesting conversation about like the origin origins in of religion in terms of like at what point, like what are the pre precursors for a religion to be formed so one of them would be intelligence but i don't think i don't think intelligence in and of itself is is enough or perhaps it is uh, like uh, because i was going to say perhaps in order for organized religion to form like organized society would need like a culture would need to build and then the religion would form as a result of kind of the highest values, the values that are sent to the top as defined by the larger culture, like that would become the religion. Um, 
but i think even in like i was thinking okay but what about what about like tribes and stuff like there are human tribes out there and they certainly have mythological beliefs about things like people in the amazon rainforest who created ayahuasca like ayahuasca is this the crazy thing about it is it's the combination of like the, i can't remember exactly what it is but it's like the leaves of one plant and the bark of another plant which need yeah. to like grew together in a specific and way bit, like eight and hours bit of humans it, yeah uh, and and someone asked them like how did they come up with that because it's so improbable that through trial and error they'd be able to and they say like i can't remember exactly what they said but it's like the trees the god told us, the god told us or the trees told yeah. us or some like so the yeah that's a bit freaky to be fair yeah so obviously tribal people they they have mythological beliefs and perhaps perhaps all animals do but obviously they lack the ability to articulate it but simply through through acting in the world and orienting themselves in a certain way like those beliefs are innate perhaps even more fundamental than languages um than the language that would articulate them because it comes down to how you act not necessarily what is said and the stories and articulation of the actions in a narrative way and then one step removed from that would be the articulation of the values themselves like being able to look at those stories and thinking okay uh, like what what are the moral things here and like that's what we do on the podcast we take things and we talk about the moral implications of them like object like the actual in an articulated way but perhaps so so i was saying like the stories and the narrative are more fundamental than the articulation but perhaps it's the actions which are the most fundamental thing um that that would seem to make sense that that mm -hmm. language is a, is a step is even one step removed from the actions so perhaps so you kind of think that the religious beliefs are a precursor to intelligence almost and the ability to talk about what you think they are uh, perhaps the religious the re religious instincts are a precursor to uh, they're fundamental to being to existing in the world because you need a set of values to orient yourselves whether that whether you even have language to explain that or not Perhaps. What about like what would you say about before we evolved to become like smart and intelligent and conscious? We had a set of values that were informed by nature, not necessarily by a higher power. Do yeah. you still think that, that that do you still think that there is a religious sentiment in like the way that apes live their lives? Yeah, well, well, you say that. Um, well, before before we were conscious, like the beliefs would be would come from nature, not from the higher power. Yeah. But you talk, but like the conceptualization of a higher power, like you you read story like books from the Bible. Where every time it says God, you could just replace that with nature, and I feel like feel like that does the same thing we'll take the Cain and Abel story for example so in that story Cain gets pissed off because things aren't going the way he wants to and he cursed God like he cursed fate he says that God isn't rewarding him for his sacrifices you could easily replace it with nature isn't rewarding him for sacrifices or just the structure of existence isn't rewarding him for his sacrifices it's just that God uh, is is the personification of of the idea of a higher power and that's that's what that's what makes it relevant so yeah i do i mean i haven't really thought about this before but it makes sense that that the actions are the most fundamental thing and that that the beliefs that orient ourselves are more based in action so yeah e any animal would is obviously obviously exists in this in their subjective world and in order to orient themselves, they have beliefs about what to do through, and, and those beliefs are acted out, not not spoken at all. But yeah, yeah. So that's I mean, based on what, so based on what I said about is nature is the one that informs 
an animal's values. Like you said earlier, you could argue that religion is the thing that has brought us to a more civilized and advanced society. Because as we got more conscious and smart, we were able to discuss the idea of what we value and then arrange that around a religion. And then instead of just staying in the trees and the savanna, fighting and pillaging different tribes, we were able to like create this huge societies. Mm -hmm. So yeah, maybe. I, think, I guess I used to just disregard religion's use a little bit more so than I do now because now you, you're starting to sway my idea of like the true benefit of religion and like how it's brought us to this point now. Yeah. No, that's... I've I've never thought about it like that in terms of the actions being the fundamental thing, but it does make sense to me and it does... It, it fits in with the idea that religion is fundamental to humans because obviously religion there's a lot of ideas tied to the word of religion but you know when i say religion here it's the existence of values that orient us or beliefs and and that goes all the way down in order to act you need beliefs about what is valuable to do um so yeah that's that's pretty cool but um but yeah so so with all of that like I've explained now why I think religion may even be like the most fundamental thing, even more fundamental than language. But in explaining that, like that view of the world, like makes me think there probably is nothing supernatural about religion. There is no, um, and obviously like I'm quite interested in science and stuff and learning about science makes me believe like there's nothing outside of the, there's nothing physically outside of the scopes of science and that that there is nothing supernatural. So even though, I mean, I even would consider myself a religious person, but I don't believe in anything, anything, anything supernatural, but perhaps supernatural shit could be real because I think it's just impossible to understand reality on that level. And I do hear things sometimes where I'm like, that's, like there's no explanation for that and it seems almost too fitting to just be a coincidence you know yeah i mean based on just what you said just then I started listening to a podcast about black holes with uh, like on the modern wisdom podcast and this woman i think named becky something um she was talking about black holes and how obviously due to the gravitational pull they have nothing kind of escapes them this is like very simple terms in the way I understood it. But based on that, because we can't really see into them because even light can't escape, we don't know what like sort of things could could exist in there. So in our world, in our subjective world, based on what law, the laws of physics teach us can happen and can't happen, when something supernatural does happen, we think, oh, this is something that can never happen. And then subconsciously, I think we think this is something that can never happen in the whole universe. Um, so we relate that to this idea of God and this higher power. Whereas I think you kind of fall, like, well, a lot of people fall into the trap of understanding that the whole universe is a lot bigger. There's a lot more depth to it that we don't understand. Um, so that possibly there is an explanation for why these supernatural things happen. Yeah still within the realms of science you don't need to be uh, yeah people have an instinct to jump towards i don't have an explanation for this therefore there must be a supernatural explanation for this and that's quite a jump which isn't necessarily justified um, mm. but in saying that i don't you know it gets complicated when when you start talking about okay what's more real the subjective reality or the objective reality and the way most people understand the world now i think is they understand the objective reality as the fundamental truth so things so scientific truth as the fundamental truth um but perhaps your you could argue that your subjective reality is more true and more real because that's the only thing that you actually experience that is far more relevant to your conscious experience of the world, which is in some sense, all you really have. 
like the subjective reality is far more fundamental than the objective reality um so perhaps in a way it's more true and yeah it's it's hard to justify like believing in god in, believing in supernatural occurrences when you do have an understanding of science so perhaps you know that that is the death of god that we can't avoid because we we can't go back into the dark now that we've realized the truths of science but um but yeah perhaps maybe the subject of reality is I, I think it I mean is it more true I I don't know have you got any thoughts on that um I mean, even if we have objective truths that, well, I think there's like different types of objective truths. Maybe there's almost the scientific object objective truths that everything in the world kind of has to obey the laws of physics, and then there's also like moral objective truths. It's terrible and wrong to murder someone. Um, stealing is wrong. Like murder, rape, and all these things are wrong they kind of could be described as objective truths, ob objective truths. Um, but they're not, they're not as objective as science because although it's wrong to murder someone, and I feel like the majority of people in the world would agree to that, Yeah, there will be a lot of people for religious reasons and for possibly other reasons that think it's perfectly acceptable and should be applauded when you murder someone, possibly for... Um, like leaving the leaving the religion or because they murder someone themselves so like the, these moral objective truths aren't as like yeah. not factual but the, th the thing is know. what what you're saying there like these moral objective truths i don't think there can be such thing as a moral objective truth because if it's if it's moral it's it's not objective like obviously we both agree that there are things that are absolutely morally wrong but i think i think the fact that it's an ethical issue automatically makes it a subjective truth and is that more true than objective reality it's hard when you use that word true because the proof the proof of the scientific method can't really be denied in any kind of way um whereas subjective truths are more like they're more abstract you can't pin them down as easily um however like okay so the word truth you might have to give it to the objective reality but like okay what's more important the subjective truths or or the or the objective truths and what's more important but well, i'm i'm sure that I, i'd be pretty sure that the subjective um moral right thing to do the ethical part of it is more more important than the than the objective part of it because and i don't yeah. think anyone would really argue that an objective fact is more important than a moral judgment than a correct or wrong moral judgment yeah i think maybe the subjective truth i think maybe i don't know if i'd believe this but maybe one could argue the subjective truth is more important for the individual, whereas an objective truth might be more important on a societal level. Like for for like for example, an individual may subjectively feel like really depressed and like their life isn't going their way. Um, so they might want to like so that might inform their actions, and they might become sad and depressed and not go out and do things for the community because they want to stay inside all day. And subjectively, you would say that's um, it's a justifiable reaction to how they feel. But objectively, on like a community level, it's wrong for that person to stay inside and not go out and help the community doing like volunteering or some stuff like that. Yeah, I th if I th that makes sense. Yeah, I I think that's I think to say on on the cultural and societal scale to say it's wrong is also I think that's. What makes you say that's that's an objective uh, truth rather than a subjective one? Because I would view that as a, a subjective. It's still uh, yeah, subjective. maybe it's still an ethical judgment, you know. Like I feel like the subjective is more based on how an individual feels, whereas an objective would kind of be 
the agreement between multiple people that this is something that should be done or this is something that can only be done because of this if that makes sense i i, so would, subjectively, I, I would still sorry. consider that it, even if people agree on it like the re- religious values for example loads of people agree on it but that's still a subjective truth and so you said an a s- objective truth would be something that a bunch of people agree upon but i would consider an objective truth something that is measurable and 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 clear so this mug is 15 centimeters tall or whatever the fuck that's an objective truth but i think as soon as you integrate some sort of value structure that something is better or worse than something else that that instantly becomes a subjective issue which perhaps this comes back to the discussion the discussion about can can rationality may maybe rationality can be can actually be subjective as well because we were saying well can rationally you 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 determine what right and wrong is and perhaps rationally you can but that would still be like a subjective form of rationalism based on trial and error um but then there's a whole discussion on like whether scientific scientific truth is actually true because scientific truth is done by done through experiment and um and so the like the old the ultimate actual truth like maths would be technically true and like logic in and of itself would be true but scientific truth is even one step less true but i mean that i feel like that's a whole other podcast um about what is what is truth and that i guess it links into this but but it's kind of a different subject from religion because we're for the for the practical purposes of this we're assuming objective truth scientific truth to be objectively true because yeah that's that's kind of the point of the scientific method but um but a way jordan peterson describes it is like the objective truth is about matter and then like the subjective truth is about what matters um and it's interesting that they're the same word but um like yeah objectively the matter exists but then subjectively by what matters what's important um yeah i think and i think what's more true you could maybe say objective reality but what's more important and what matters more well that's what subjective reality is almost by definition it's about what matters i think yeah i mean that's a fair assumption then is the is i was going to say is the idea that subjective truth is more important is that not centered around humans almost like what's more important yeah is realistically the question of what's more important to the human experience <clears throat> and how do we know that like, is it more important for the human experience for us to survive even if we kill all those species along the way yeah yeah so because we we go back to like um so so let's assume that nature is the higher power that governs the origin the origination of our values and moral judgments um and like at a very fundamental level that would probably come down to an evolutionary thing of what's better for the survival and for the thriving of our species um so yeah it does but even even that like saying is the furthering of humans worth the suffering of animals like that's that's an ethical argument which which once again is a subjective in the kind of subjective realm of discussion um but yeah it's an interesting one okay then in all question for you that I kind of came up before the podcast is like even if god even if god is real and kind of exists and is subjectively the most important thing for a lot of people do you think it's important and necessary to involve the idea of that higher power in the government like in america it seems like no president will be elected unless 
they like show the people that they believe in a god and then like in the uk parliament we've got lord spirituals there's 26 archbishops and bishops that hold positions in the house of the lord in the house of the lords um like is it necessary for us to have religion integrated into like how we run the country um my my initial thoughts on that would be no because i think um i don't think some some sort i'd say your religious beliefs aren't don't necessarily indicate your competence for a position um and I do also believe that you don't necessarily have to be religious to have, because the argument would be that you need religious people in power because they have the proper morals and values that you think best represent by what, what how decisions should be made. And I don't necessarily think that people need religion to have a proper set of values um, and to be moral people. Um, so no but it does come back to this this conversation about how um about on, on a larger scale if if the government doesn't have any like what is what is the higher values that is guiding the government and the decisions that are being made like is there any higher values and i guess that i guess there can be some through democracy like that it would represent the the values of the people because they vote for the people who resonate with their values so yeah i don't i don't think i don't think it's it's necessary but but with um it's interesting you point out how like in in america and in the uk um that the moral that um religion is still part of like the the government or, or the system but but the difference between these western countries and like for example islamic countries is it in the in Islamic countries, like in Islam, like the belief is that the state ha it cannot be separate from the religion. So the laws must, like the laws in those countries, um, like in UAE or, or or whatever, they represent the religion. Like the laws are the laws of the Shrile. religion, whereas that is not the case um, in Western countries. Um, and that's kind of a fundamental difference, I think, between Christianity and Islam, that one believes that this state and the religion can be separate and the other doesn't. So that's another ethical ethical thing. But yeah, I, I believe that the state and religion can be separate. Yeah, I think they should be separate. I do think it's... I do think it's, it has some value that religion has informed how we should govern people and the laws that we make to protect certain people and all these other things. And that ultimately did come from believing in higher power. But like you said, nowadays, we need to distill out these ancient ideas that just aren't, aren't applicable to the modern world. Yeah. But then how do you, do you think you'll ever get to, is it possible to get to a point where these Islamic countries with like Sharia law, are they going to be able to become more secular, like the state at least? Or I don't. I mean, in God, who knows? In a long enough period of time, I mean, in a long enough period of time, you know, civilization, the civilization will probably be for a while. Eventually, it will be destroyed. But I mean. I th I don't th I think they will stick stick with their their current um like system. Uh, I think I think that will stay the same for a long time. I don't think there's any. I don't think the West the beliefs of the Western world will influence that those countries. I think they'll remain with these same beliefs. And I mean, there's a whole another conversation here to uh, which argues like our countries which enforce these. You could you could argue that they do it in a tyrannical way, but are these countries that force these strict strict belief systems on their people are they more sustainable and are they stronger as a country? Whereas 
in in the western world everyone has different beliefs about everything and there's no real unifying higher values and and like it's extremely common like perhaps the average person maybe not the average person but at least a large minority of people in the western world are extremely critical of um the countries and, and the values that the country holds and like if we go i feel like if we go to war with a country which does have a strong set of values um which perhaps is forced upon the people but it will they will probably be stronger and yeah but it, maybe the national nationalism might be stronger but uh, for Amer americans for example they might disagree on a lot of moral uh and ethical like issues but there is a unifying concept of we are american and mm -hmm. we live yeah. in a country where people's beliefs are acceptable even if we disagree with them we do tolerate them yeah yeah that's perhaps yeah it's a national it's a so national fighting, they're, they're, so it's, like, they'd be sorry they'd be fighting as individuals collectively whereas i feel like in a, the other country on the other side if they're forced to believe in these ideas they'll be fighting for their country but kind of just as a follower not as an individual who has their like autonomy over their life um it comes back to this this argument between individual and collectivist values because perhaps you could argue that you say that they they would be weaker because they're not fighting as an individual but you could argue that they'd be stronger because they're fighting for a bigger cause than themselves but um yeah, but yeah so perhaps Perhaps in America, they wouldn't like in America, for example, the the ideas of individual freedom, like that's what they're fighting for. They're not fighting for their religious beliefs. But I mean, like this idea of individual freedom, like the right to freedom of speech, this this is perhaps what leads to people criticizing the values of um of a of of the culture, you know like in the Western world, by like very like woke progressive type people are very critical of, of um, like the values of, of a country, even though those values of individualism and freedom of speech and stuff is what allows them to exist as people who have their own opinions about things and are able to, are able to have, have these beliefs that the values are wrong, but it's the, it's, it's those that individual freedom value that allows them to have that opinion in the first place mm. so it's kind of it, it's a bit of a paradox and perhaps it doesn't work out as well in the long term uh, and you can we could probably do a whole podcast on individualism versus collectivism we spoke about it a couple of times now um, and that's probably a good idea but yeah it's, it's an interesting debate there yeah yeah maybe maybe like if maybe to, to determine if an individual will work better in in an individualistic country or collectivist country it might have to do like a big five personality test or like maybe that informs mm. where one would where one would person would thrive most yeah possibly yeah well i I'd, i'm not sure exactly what the metrics are but i remember seeing this this thing um about how different countries it's almost like a per, five big five personality traits but for the country like a big five like scale of belief and, and one of them is individualism to collectivism like that's one of the scales i forget what it's called but um uh, like like the scale but yeah different cultures do have different it, it's like that was it hofsted like the guy called hofsted that sounds like it could be right i'll call that i think mean, it's like albert hofsted's um like differences in culture so there's a there's he has like a few he has like four dimensions upon which he measures like a culture for a country there's like the individual versus, versus collectivist um yeah the power uh, distance I think so that, yeah because you probably because i think i learned about this in like an uh, economics module yeah i'm doing it I did it last year i'm doing a little bit on yeah. it this year as well yeah I think that is in the um, yeah but yeah yeah but then that's good. it's a bit broad a bit of a broad brush to 
paint on the country like there's so many different differences in a country like china's huge they have huge differences between each region so does america yeah, yeah. and then even like a small country like japan still has a large population so they'll have differences in the demographics and stuff like that but i guess i guess some perhaps smaller differences than between an entire different country country yeah no that's a fair point but yeah back back to the religion thing it, it's an interesting debate whether whether having religious values enforced by the state would make would make a country stronger in the long term and you can argue about the ethical implications of that uh, but does it make them stronger? Does a strong, it, it makes sense to me that having a stronger set of values, which are more strongly enforced, would make them a more formidable country. Yeah. More powerful. I and, mean, and more, more purposeful and more, have a stronger direction to move forward into. Whereas perhaps countries which have less of a strong value system like where everyone has their own beliefs like they don't have this unifying thing to push them forward which makes them weaker in and of themselves yeah possibly i mean i don't know much about it but i remember reading a book called the kite runner and it talks about um pakistan this guy who grows this boy grows in pakistan and then the islamic revolution happens uh, in the 20th century i think it's like the late 20th century like 60s or 70s um, but basically, the idea I got was that Pakistan was this amazing country that flourished, and afterwards the Islamic Revolution happened, and the state became a lot more uh, religious and enforced those religious values on people. Mm -hmm. I don't know if Pakistan's doing better now than it used to, but yeah, it'd be interesting to like explore that. Yeah, I guess you could also argue that. So I presented the case there for having those values making the country stronger, but perhaps. Perhaps it can make it weaker in a way where where a tyranny is not as strong as a free society. Perhaps when people act out their religious beliefs, particularly when it's extremist beliefs, that it doesn't work out in the long term for the country necessarily. It goes both ways, perhaps. Yeah, like the individual freedom be this tyrannical pressure. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it does seem that I think I think when, for example, more progressive countries, the more progressive countries in the world are the more like successful countries in the world in terms of like GDP or whatever, um, like countries in, in Scandinavia, for example, are the most, the most progressive and they're some of the most like financially, uh, yeah, fi financially good and pa perhaps abandoning some of the restrictions that religion brings allows for for example allowing women to to work like opens you up to more talent uh, and and you can make the most of people's potential and that pushes the country forward so perhaps perhaps religion in some ways especially with some of the less progressive beliefs of religion it does actually limit the progression of the culture but but you could argue having that strong value, although it limits the progression, perhaps it makes the culture more stable. Um, and I guess it's too early to know how, how more progressive cultures, how successful they'll be over hundreds or thousands of years, because we simply haven't had enough time. But, um, but yeah. Yeah, it will be interesting. Maybe eventually a new ideology comes and takes, takes over the state. Which is religious in nature, maybe. Perhaps, yeah. I, would, I mean, perhaps, perhaps the less religious countries will end up being unstable and not being able to continue their their success that they've had over over the past years. And then countries, for example, Islamic countries, or even a country like China with more stronger set of values, but less less freedom, end up being more stable and end up being able to to dominate more over time. So yeah, I guess we'll see how it plays out. But or maybe we won't. Maybe it'll take too long for us to see. But, but yeah. Yeah. We'll be dead by then anyway. Yeah. Why what does it matter at all? Yeah. There's no afterlife.
Hmm. Um, what do you say about if God is omnipresent, omnipotent, omniscient? Do you hold him, or would should a, should a religious person hold him responsible for human suffering? Yeah. Or is human suffering a result of human activity? It's one of it's one of the criticisms of uh, that a lot of people atheist people make about make about God. If, if he is so powerful, why why does he allow all this suffering in the world? Which is a valid question. Uh, and should should you hold if if why should you hold someone the someone being God to such a high high importance? when when he allows so much suffering in the world um yeah it's a fucking good point to be fair <laughs> what do you think about <laughs> that do you think you'd hold him accountable for that uh personally i wouldn't hold him accountable i think it would just it would just suspend my belief in him or her or it whatever you call it it would just suspend my belief in god like i saw when I was looking at Sam Harris's website on atheism, that the Washington Post found that eighty percent of Katrina's survivors claim that the event only strengthened their faith in God. So, out of the, about all the survivors, eighty percent of them said the hurricane Katrina actually made them more religious and more faithful to God. And like, he, like Sam Harris goes on to say that only an atheist would recognise that. That, that the boundless narcissism and self deceit of the saved, like that same God that they have more faith in now, drowned babies in the cribs, like killed thousands of people. And it's a little bit narcissistic for someone to be like, Oh wow, I've been tried and tested by this reckoning and wrath of God, and I've come out on the other side, so he must be real. And I have so much more faith in him now. And yeah. It's just a little bit like fucking. Get over yourself it does, like, so yeah. well. it does seem wrong but it's interesting because that mindset that's like i think i think that'd be described as like a growth mindset to to see the challenges of life as to be grateful for them and to see them as good things like i actually think that's a really good mindset to have and it's kind of actually a stoic mindset that that every, that there's a way of being grateful for everything that happens to you and, and seeing the good in that is will lead you to having a better life and, and having better well-being um but obviously yeah there, there is an issue with your 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 thanking god from saving you from helping you through the struggle that he created um and obviously there's a lot of suffering that, that never gets never gets reconciled you know and it just ends in a in a painful and painful way um that, that it can't be justified like that but um i had a couple of thoughts there about kind of this issue of this issue of god's not uh, this issue of there being suffering in the world and how can there be suffering um and i think this was in i think in jordan peterson's i can't remember which book it was one of the 12 wolves for life ones um, he's, he's talked about how, like, there's a certain fragility to, to being and, and to existence. Um, and so if you take a child, um, which is a very special thing, and then you say, but this, this child's vulnerable and naive and can it easy, and is easily hurt. And, and you can ask, well, how can you justify that, that being? That, that existing uh but he uh, he doesn't he explained this as kind of a thought experiment where he said okay so what if you were to have have the child but make make him out of metal and uh, and for him to be like 20 foot tall built out of metal indestructible uh and then he altered his mind in a way where he was emotionally unaffectable like it loses its humanity so perhaps there's something fundamental to humanity about about the vulnerability that comes with it 
what are your thoughts on that? I agree with that. But but what's like what point are you trying to make in terms of like its relationship to like God and religion? Um I guess the point I was trying to make is that if you remove the suffering uh, i mean i guess it's kind of a separate point because it, it still doesn't necessarily justify god being um like god causing suffering when he has the power not to but it's kind of a point about how like without the suffering of life without the vulnerability um that comes with being alive and that that life kind of loses its meaning it loses its meaning in a way so that that was one thought i mean not to say that that necessarily justifies the existence of a god that allows suffering but but perhaps it it indicates that you know we, the structure of reality is the way it is for a reason um uh, and things may and perhaps it couldn't be another way it, perhaps if there right. were gods he wouldn't be able to arbitrarily change certain bits of reality like that um in order for it to be still be like a coher coherent existence like you can't just go around fucking stopping by like, working miracles everywhere in, in random ways because obviously i mean hypothetically if there were to be a god like people would ar people argue now that okay we accept the scientific truths but we think that god kind of exists in this in this different realm and that he created the big bang and, and stuff like that for example so but i mean if, if he were omni omnipotent then he would have the power to to change things regardless of the structure of reality but but yeah um that's that's one thought uh, that's one thought about no that. that's interesting so you're basically saying that an atheist might argue if god is real he's an omnipotent so he could change the structure of reality so he'd make everyone immortal and have the best lives ever and everyone will just enjoy life forever whereas well, that would be a meanness of existence maybe yeah yeah the argument against that is god creates this fragility and vulnerability to give our to give us scarcity and that is what gives us meaning and is that what you're trying to say yeah yeah i guess i guess that would be the point not to say i necessarily believe that yeah yeah but, you know just then, but like, if you if that's if that's something else a religious person would believe why would they necessarily want to go to heaven like in my mind heaven's this place you go to when you die and it's just like a place of like your wildest imaginations and dreams and you just live like the most fulfilling like fun life ever forever why would a human kind of want to go there if they believe so deeply that God creates this destruction and suffering to give us humans, um, well, to give us the human experience? Mm. Why would you then want to go to a heaven where the I'm human sure experience is completely out of touch? Hold on, I'll be back in a second. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Um yeah, that's a that's a good argument. Um yeah, because I guess heaven acts as some some ultimate redemption for the suffering that you endure. And that's like the ultimate reward, but and yeah, yeah that makes sense. Uh, I don't know. It's kind of like, oh, I've done all this suffering. Now let's let's get to the good shit. Yeah. Yeah, but then if the suffering is what gives your life meaning, how do you know that the heaven will give you meaning? Or maybe it's not necessary to have meaning in heaven because it's a different. It's like it's, it's uh, just a completely different reality 
Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It seems to be it's hard it's hard to rationally go through and, and justify all those things. I mean, I don't really believe believe in that's in like heaven, for example, or 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 a omnipotent God myself. Um but but yeah, it, it's interesting to think about like because obviously for when where there's value in religion, for example, where there's value in um like believing in the afterlife um and without that belief it can make people somewhat feel meaningless in their lives like that obviously is like it's interesting to discuss what value there is there of of heaven kind of maybe contradictions between different ideas in trying to understand it um and one other thing i was thinking about in terms of like the suffering uh, of of humans in particular is is that it, it made me think about the story of Adam and Eve about how before the the consciousness came up or really the realization of the fu- of the future um we were just like these these we were animals uh, and nothing more we, we would just go around naked and not really care and it it was kind of kind of paradise but then you know we were when Eve when they when they ate the apple with the tree of life and they became conscious and aware of the future like that burdened them with almost to some degree becoming gods themselves as as they now know the difference between good and evil and things like that so there's a burden that comes with raising perhaps raising to a high level of consciousness as a burden that comes with that um and obviously that's going to bring suffering but one might argue that that it, that is worth the that is worth it um yeah mm. but yeah that that's just one of that that's just something an idea i thought about when when you bring up the facts like that okay the suffering in the world like how how can one justify this from a religious perspective right so god is almost it's like it's like the it's like i don't know about yeah there's like a leadership module that i'm doing at the moment and it's uh, one of the things i've kind of thought about is Jocko willing and he talks about great leaders don't just lead people they teach their followers how to become leaders and then like a great god would almost teach a person how to not become a god but take godlike qualities and live those throughout their life yeah and i guess i mean that that all comes back that comes back around to like the idea of the higher man or the ubermensch in the death of gods like we no longer have have this god so no perhaps that's even a further elevation of our, our level of consciousness that we have to we can't um outsource our values now to to a to an external god so we need to discover these for ourselves but perhaps there is still these values which are fundamentally true and then i think yeah you know in these discussions we've sort of we've sort of been been realizing maybe or, or trying to trying to trying to identify what that is and and like this higher man concept obviously resonates rather than you know aiming towards self-actualization and do and and creation and achievement like that's that's the proper values to have i think rather than consumption and and pleasure and uh and comfort um but yeah it's, it's an interesting one yeah yeah i mean i don't really think i've got anything else i need to or want to discuss i've covered a lot of it today i didn't think we get into that many different like, avenues mm-hmm. um anything else you want to chat about no no i think yeah we, we spoke a lot about a lot of different things there and there was some good stuff in there i mean like podcasts like this one is it's kind of difficult because i you know 
I feel like we don't really know like the conversation itself is, is a discovery of the ideas and the exploration of them. So we're almost going into it blindfolded, trying to try and see what happens. But yeah, mm. it's been good takeaways from this conversation for me. Uh, so yeah, it's been good. Yeah. Well, if you choose to follow a religion, just choose a good one. Uh, yeah. Don't choose a cult. And if you don't, try and, you know, have good values anyway and don't be a little fucking last man <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah i guess we'll finish it up there maybe and then see you guys next time it's currently 11 58 a.m on my clock so we're going about an hour and a half just over or just about uh it's nice um yeah i'm not too sure what the next episode will be we'll kind of discuss that between ourselves and get that ready uh, for next time. Um, but no other news that I need to tell anyone, I don't think. Uh, what we saw, Pete? Uh, none for me either. Yeah, so I guess we'll see you in the next episode. Yeah, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoy. Goodbye. Peace. Peace.